Hey folks, it's Pat here. Got one more uh, chapter 10 question for you here real quick uh, that I want to cover, and that's a hypothesis test for the population proportion. Do the Z-test and the T-test one before you do this one, just because the math in this one's a little bit more janky, and by the time you get through those, this part here will be easy breezy, all right? Now, these do get a little frustrating just because sometimes they use um, a different term, which is this guy right here, pi. And you notice that pi is not in here, and so a lot of people get jammed up on that. But um, let's get through this one. I'll show you why that is, okay? So now, a population proportion, remember a proportion is just a percent, it's a fraction, okay? And so when we're testing a population proportion, we're going to use the Z to statistic, even though we don't have the population standard deviation, and that's for reasons, <laughs> as explained in the in the explanation of this all right so um, but um, don't worry about that so just remember whenever you're using you're dealing with population proportion you're actually going to be using the z-step okay and so let's pick out our alternate hypothesis here you got to be careful with these because sometimes as the hypothesis testing questions go on they, they start throwing you know like little twists at you here and there and so let's see if we get one um, so it was claimed recently that more than 55% of high school students in the United States use computers for educational purposes. We want to examine this claim. All right. So it shows a random sample, 235 high school students, 146 for use computers for educational purposes. This must be an old test. So <laughs> based on this, can we conclude at the dot one level of significance that more than 55% of high school students use their um, computers for educational purposes. And so even though it, it sometimes asks you for this pi, what it's really asking for is P, which is your proportion. So we think the proportion is actually greater than dot five five, so it's 55% where um, our null hypothesis would cover all of our other bases, so it's less than or equal to 55. We're going to use the z-test for this for reasons and the value of the test statistic. All right, so this is where the formulas start getting a little bit more complicated. Here's your formula for this. All right, z equals your sample proportion minus the population proportion, okay? So that's what pi means, divided by the square root of pi times 1 minus pi all over n okay so it looks a little janky is a little janky you might want to write this guy down so pause the video pause the video i'll hold it still for you <laughs> okay all right but um once we actually do this one in the alex calculator a couple times it's not that hard all right so here we go we're going to punch that in the first thing that you have to calculate is this p your proportion all right and you do that by taking the number of favorable cases which is the number that you're looking for so 146 people decided to use computers out of 230 that we tested bam there's your P right there all right it's the only time you need to calculate that in this equation so you take that all right and then you're going to um, subtract your population proportion which they guess it's at 55.55 okay so that gives you the difference between the two take that divide it by square root and we'll go through this slowly of pi which is .55 times 1 minus pi, which is dot 55, five, all over, oops, all over your sample size, which is 235. All right, so that's how you want to punch that in the LX calculator there. Hit enter, and we get a test statistic. And remember, with the Z statistic, it's going to be somewhere between usually negative 3 or positive 3. If you get something that's higher than that, you probably did it wrong. So 2.1196. Okay. So crit value, they want us to use the crit value method here to make our conclusion. So our crit value, we're going to do our Z table lookup using the Z square button. And of course, we're looking for something greater than that. And so we can just punch it in directly with our level of significance, which is dot one. Bam, there we go. Dot one, two, one, dot two, one, one, dot two, eight, two. There we go. All right. And so can we conclude that uh, more than 55% of high school students in the United States use computers? Yes, because of course our test statistic is way out past our cutoff value, which is of course above our mean, which is what we're testing. Okay. So bam. Yes. On that. Now you can do it that way. All right. Um, formula is not too bad. All right. You just have to calculate P first. And then remember that pi here is of course this value that they're giving you here. But um, you can also use this, uh, head on over to the chapter or module three folder and pull up Math Cracker to do it here. And I know this site has got so many pop-ups on it that it's just like slowing down my frame rate 
It's making my computer chug. All right, but you can use this test right here, which is Z test one population proportion. You pull that up by going here to statistics calculators, Z test calculators, and you'll find it in there. Okay, just make sure you get these all this stuff entered in here correctly. So you know your 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 null and your alternate hypothesis. Let me double check those to make sure I did them right. Yes. So this is less or greater than. This one's greater than. Okay, cool. <laughs> your hypothesized population proportion. Okay, that's going to be whatever pi is in here. Okay, and then your number of favorable cases and your sample size. This is just calculating p for you, and then your level of significance. Hit solve down here. Don't hit this continue button, okay? <laughs> I don't know where it'll take you. <laughs> it changes. <laughs> All right? So if you're feeling lucky, go for it, but don't do that. All right, solve, and then wait forever, and it'll spit out all of this stuff here, okay? So, and we can use this to check our answers. Okay, so let's go back. It wanted our value of a test statistic, which we got a 2.196. 2.196 is our test statistic in section three here. And then it wanted our crit value, which is 1.282, which um, they got right here is 1.28. All right, so they rounded that down to two. So be careful with that if it asks for three. All right, and then of course, yes, we can conclude this because this number is greater than this one. And of course, yep, they say the exact same thing. The null hypothesis is rejected at the alpha of dot one significance okay so this um, that website will solve all the problems that you're going to find here in test for population proportion <clears throat> the only other one that you're going to see is of course the um, the two-tailed test let's actually just see if we get one of those here real quick oh yeah yeah, yeah we got them right <laughs> that was a good thing to check anyway let's see if we get a two-tailed test here we go here's a two-tailed test all right so let's just do this one by hand real quick here all right and I'm gonna blow through this one so the alternate hypothesis they want to know if the proportion has changed so the proportion is no longer um, dot seven seventy percent so dot seven so of course our null hypothesis is everything else so yes it still does equal seventy percent we're gonna use the Z stat for this one because it's proportion value of the test statistics so let's take a look at our our P value or our P which is 155 divided by 225 so our sample proportion is dot six eight I'm going to subtract our population proportion which is pi which is dot seven okay and we get that we're going to take that divide that whole thing up uh, not subtract divide that whole thing by the square root of pi which is dot seven times one minus pi which is dot three you can just type that in there if you wanted to but oh well all over n which is our sample size 225 here's our test statistic is uh, negative 0 0.367 okay so that's a pretty low test, test statistic let's see what it wants us to oh p-value oh crap I cleared that out of the calculator there we go <laughs> so here's our p-value and remember with the two-tailed test we take this guy we punch it into our p of z here and hit enter and we get that and of course, we're going to multiply that by two, so we get a really high p-value on this one. This might be incorrect. So let me just double check my math on this one here real quick, because that that's kind of tripping my radar a little bit as being a little bit too high. And so we might have made a mistake. So let's do this calculation again. All right, so 155 divided by 225, 225, oops equals that okay so we got that right minus dot seven okay so you're going to take this value all over the square root of pi which is dot seven times one minus pi divided by n which again is 225 225 there we go Yep, all right, so of course, multiply that by two. Or no, that's this guy. Punch that into this calculator here. Yep, multiply that by two, looks like we're good. All right, so nope, can't do that, check. 
There we go. All right. So yeah, every now and then you can get a really weird p value like that. And so if you do get one like that, it's a good idea to check your math. All right. Otherwise, you can go over to the math cracker site, punch all that crap in there, and you'll probably do it <laughs> without fail as long as you get the signs right and make sure that you pull all the information into that website. So hope that helps with population proportion. That should round out chapter 10 for you. Chapter 11 is more of the same. So we'll see you there.